welcome to the most magical edition of Polly Mondays. I not only because I have grown somehow this huge Mickey Mouse-like hand here. However, it's going to be super magical not because of that, but because of the topic today, progressive web apps. I have started to speak about it, uh, this topic, uh, much more lately, right? Like um, last month, you can see here, I published this blog post um, sharing a little bit about what they are, what are the functionalities, why we want them, and how we can actually easily start implementing them on our own sites even. The same with the presentation that I gave a couple of days ago. Um, I would like to cover today some of the most important aspects, highlighting those much more critical critical aspect that I believe that we all should take into consideration uh, and, and also taking you to see some of those resources that I consider to be very, very, very useful to really facilitate the implementation of progressive web apps in any website, considering also a little bit of, of course, SEO implications of them. But we are going to see that actually it shouldn't be necessarily bad progressive web apps. They don't necessarily challenge additionally of what we should be already doing in today's 2019 state of technical SEO anyway. Let's let's take a look. The main issue is the main challenge that we have nowadays is that we live in a world that we don't even realize that mobile apps are broken and and they well they have evolved like this uh, lately, right? Like they eat your mobile bi battery a lot. They take a lot of phone space, um, require constant updates. App content is not findable, which I have to say, this is one of the most important and critical things that I will say pay, they pay me more as, as an SEO, right? The, the, the content lives on a, on a not necessarily open environment that are the app stores and, and try to find something of specific information that any of these web apps have internally, right? Like there's not necessarily, that's not necessarily that easy right now, right? They are fragmented and vertical. There are so many different apps that brands can enable to cover limited functionality to. So at the end, this will make app development very, very, very expensive. Why do we still keep using them, right? Like, why do we use this app still anyway? And realistically, the mobile web especially is not necessarily that better from a usability and functionality perspective. Unfortunately, still today, mobile websites suck a lot, many of them, right? The Aer Lingus, they don't even have a proper mobile site, a mobile version. Or when I was looking to research a few information ab about a few attractions uh, on, on Disney when I was going um, on the last days, take a look, this is an actual screenshot of the, the site on my mobile that I was trying to access. There was no way, and you can see how what I can actually see is the ad and that's it, right? So speed and usability are still huge challenges. And of course, we cannot access the information uh, when we are offline. This is a big, big challenge um, for a better engagement from, from a user perspective, of course. And of course, easier app access for frequent use too, because we can add the app on uh, the home screen of our on our phone and uh, many apps use additional need to use additional functionalities and features of our phone hardware that that is not possible uh, to do for normal web apps so all of this um, incentivize us from a functionality perspective to end up using uh, mobile apps and of course to, to brands to build those mobile apps despite all of the challenges that I mentioned before this type of experience um, is what progressive web apps will help to, to, to fix and it close the gap between uh, mobile web, a lot of user, a lot of very high reach, good reach, um, but difficult uh, to, to, to use sometimes to access the content offline. Uh, and, and that is why it has engagement challenges. And then on the other hand, apps, uh, easy to use from that perspective, much more engageable, easier engagement, but in this close environment uh, where the, the content is not open. This is how progressive web apps will close uh, the, 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 the functionalities between native apps 
uh, versus responsive website, mobile website, right? Get functions online. Uh, we can use push notifications. They are installable, installable on home screen of, of, of smartphones, and they can provide this full screen experience. <laughs> apps are an additional um, add-on and provide this additional functionality on our current web experience right now. Um, however, they don't provide any SEO advantage. I mean, they are not a ranking factor, not because we are using progressive web apps that we are going to rank better on Google. On the other hand, it should be also said that they don't necessarily challenge more SEO of what we already have necessarily. Why? Because, well, the, I, I see that a lot of people um, think that, for example, progressive web apps are harder because they are web apps by default, right? And, 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 and many of web apps are single page applications. Well, realistically, many are single page ap applications, but a few are not, <laughs> right? And they actually, this is not a requirement. It, 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 I mean, a spa, a, a single page application can become a progressive web app. Um, but in order to be a progressive web app that complies with all of the requirements we are going to see of the existing checklist uh, to validate it, they need to provide a single URL, a specific URL per page. So if they are a single page application, it won't work well necessarily. But this is a restriction and a challenge and a problem that single page applications have, not progressive web apps, because we can uh, evolve and we can add progressive web apps capabilities to any type of web app, not only single page applications, but also to mul multiple page applications. And we can even enable progressive web apps functionalities. And I'm going to show you how to your existing website, um, the guidelines for, for building indexable progressive web apps when they highlighted that one common approach to creating progressive web apps is to use client side rendering, uh, rely on JavaScript to generate a lot of the content of, of, of them. Uh, because they, many of them are the evolution of web apps, right? Like they add this progressive web apps functionalities and characteristics of already existing uh, web apps that rely a lot, that they have been developed with JS frameworks uh, that rely on, on uh, client-side JavaScript rendering in order to show the content. But again, this is not a necessary challenge of progressive web apps. These are a challenge of current, JavaScript development uh, status, right, in, in 2019, that making it a little bit harder uh, to Google to identify uh, the content, to crawl and index the content, to render the content. For a website, let's say that you already have a website, you don't, you don't intend to necessarily create a web app from scratch. You also can enjoy of progressive web app type of, of, of advantages here. You need to build a responsive website that can also be unbased if you want, as, as an alternative of technology, of course. You can create a web manifest, a JSON file that will inform about the progress web apps to, 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 to be installable. And then also set up a service worker that uh, is a JavaScript that will run in the background, defining what data is available uh, and what there is there to update or not, um, and the notifications. Uh, while and, and make it workable also while offline. Uh, what the result there too is to make sure that any of this different type of progressive web apps to be considered real progressive web apps, uh, they should comply with these features, right? They need to be served over HTTPS, they should load while offline, they, sh they should have a time to interact with less than 10 seconds in 3G. Uh, they, each page should have its own URL, sorry, uh, spas, right? So this, the, 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 the requirement here. And we can see how we can provide these characteristics to any type of website. Let's take a look how. And we have here a very good step-by-step -step guides. Uh, and I am going to show you a, a couple of websites that I have built following these guides. Uh, this Kotlabs guide from, from Google, which is step-by-step -step to build a progressive web app um, and migrating from a current existing website. We have this other that is to build a, a develop web, a progressive web app to from scratch or build a progressive web app site too. So this website that you see on screen right now, uh, that is the website that I created that call, that is called How Pwam Works, uh, is actually created on Pwam by following uh, this step-by-step -step guide here from the Code Labs. 
uh, where they actually give you all all the information and all the, the, the code to create uh, your first pump website. So for example, if I go and take a look here at the at the HTML, you will see how this is an AMP uh, base web page here. There is a service worker here that is being called. And if I run here uh, the the progressive web app validation from from uh, lighthouse it will validate the main the most important um, characteristics and features that i explained before that are required let's see so here uh so we can see how using the validation here uh we have been able to check that this page here this html well amp html based page um passes all of these validations to be considered a progressive web app. Um, loads, loads fast, serving HTTPS, um, in this case, where is the service worker uh, response with that 200 went offline. Uh, uh, users can be prompted to install the web app if, if we want. So this is great. We can validate that this is indeed a progressive web app. Here is another example of a shockingly progressive web app uh, features site. Why my web traffic drop? And it's a website that I created using WordPress. If, but we can see here how, for example, this particular uh, page here, uh, the, the service the service worker uh, worker that it has here that is enabled with super progressive web app, which is that here the the plugin that I use for it, and it's completely um, free to use with WordPress and here the web app manifests again with the name here's the little JSON file that I generated with it the colors um, the icons to be uh, shown and, and downloadable to the to the home screen here uh, so we can we can also validate this easily with uh, Chrome DevTools here uh, using the applications um, panel here and then again we can do the validation that as we did before um, with Lighthouse by checking if this is a progressive web app or not. So you can see here that in this particular case, everything was passed, but that it took too much to load. Oh my, I blame WordPress for that. No, 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 never mind. Uh, but all of the additional validations are, are correctly passed here as you can see the the few additional validations that need to need, need to be made uh, manually like for example that each page uh, has a url so it works cross browser of course you need to, to manually check that uh, in other type of browsers too pages transitions don't feel that they block and then of course there are web apps like this one of starbucks that they have this parallel web app that lives in in, in an app subdomain that have previously web apps uh, functionalities to, so for example i come here to validate uh, these functionalities i will run the validation with lighthouse we are going to see how yeah they, they pass the functionalities this is a progressive web app indeed however we are going to see how in this other particular case unlike the case of the amp base uh, website or the the wordpress website that of course is already optimizable or optimized uh, because it was a former website that where we had been doing seo anyway before uh, and optimizing it uh, this uh, in uh, this other case is a little bit different right so again it passes the validations most of them this one of, of the speed is not passed oh, oh, surprise surprise um, but then the other functionalities are, are validated are cor correctly validated um, however what we can see here on the other hand is that a lot of this content here if I come here and I, I see this content I look for this content on them I'm going to see that it exists there right? join Starbucks rewards to get more of what you love however if I go and look for this content in, in the source HTML, I won't find it because they rely on, again, oh, join Star Wars reward. Take a look, it's here, but it's here in this chunk of scripts, right? This is not in the HTML. We can go to the mobile uh, validation from Google, for example, to see the visual representation of, of, of how Google renders the, the, the information of, of this app here. Uh, so that is for this particular page, but we should be able to do that for 
every meaningful page and we know that this will work well well maybe for for smaller websites but if this is a dynamic website that is updating the content um, all the time that has millions of URLs well it can be a little bit more uh, resource intensive for Google and we really want to facilitate this we don't want to rely necessarily on, on client side rendering and we need to be careful and verify that the content that is that is indexable that is crawlable that is um, in this case uh, render on, on the page also um, is, is, is the one that um, any user can access and, and the ones that we really want to make sure that Google sees from, from our content. But again, this is because not necessarily this is a first web app, but this is because it's a mobile app that relies on, on JavaScript rendering. Um, last but not least, uh, Google, I have to say, that really facilitates our life on this because they have these examples here of indexable progressive web apps um, pages. Um, one of them is, is um, hybrid render, another one is client side render, the other server side render. They provide the code here on GitHub and they have also the examples here that we can take a look so we can share this with our developers if we're in the process to develop a, a new website that um, we want to have um, privacy web app functionalities and um, at some point we want to check the, the the implementations quite easily we can come here and we can check how it is uh, progressive web apps for um, for example a server render website a client render one of course we come here and if we disable the javascript we will see that there's not much to see surprise surprise so if we load again it will be like this yes uh, and of course this is something that we want to avoid but again not necessarily only a specific issue of progressive web apps, but of the nature of, of the web nowadays, right? And it is why it's important to always double check, double validate, uh, that we always crawl uh, with and without uh, JavaScript, and we compare the those those crawls as I show here on the slides, and 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 we are aware that um, if something there important is is missed. I hope that you have enjoyed today's edition of Crawling Mondays and if you hadn't yet, you now see all the, the, the opportunities that Progressive Web Apps have for us in the future, how easy it can be to implement and how they don't necessarily add up much more complexity if you are already optimizing your website of what you already should be doing anyway. Um, if you want to take a look at much more, um, check out the How Plum Works website. Uh, all of the resources that I have here, guides even to track progressive web app events too. Um, how it, there are some themes here in, in WordPress that already support progressive web apps too, or tools to, to validate progressive web apps. Um, and progressive web apps examples too. Uh, th there is something very, very important before I leave. This website that is called the PWA directory. Here you can take a look at many websites and web apps that are already progressive web apps too. So for example, I can click on any of them and it will allow us to see their Lighthouse uh, validation status here, their progressive web app and performance one. And this is something that we can share uh, with our team if they want examples if they want a reference we can check out the 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 app manifest here and and this is super exciting because every time that i check out this website there's even there are even more progressive web apps out there too so thank you very much i hope that you have enjoyed today progressive web app edition of crawling mondays and hopefully you have like the the all the information about all the the functionalities and opportunities out there if you want me to cover any topic too that I haven't yet covered, just let me know, send me a message or send me a tweet at Crawling Mondays. And I am very looking forward to see you next Monday too. Have a great week. Bye-bye.